Hello, and welcome, dear listeners, to the very first episode of the Ray Review Podcast. I'm Ray, and I am your guide into all things true crime. I'm absolutely thrilled to embark on this adventure with you. This podcast has been a long time in the making, and I'm so excited to be able to go into the kind of detail into stories that I'd like to, and I'm really not able to on other social media sites. In this podcast, we're going to explore the darker side of humanity, uncover the truth behind some mysteries, and uh, definitely tell you some mind-bending stories. So, if you have a fascination with true crime, and you want to hear more, and this sounds like something up your alley, then please hit subscribe and join me on this journey. In these next few episodes, I want to delve into why Halloween is such a scary holiday, um, considering that it's coming up and it's my absolute favorite holiday. Um, And I'm not just talking about ghost stories, but real true crime stories that have given people a healthy fear and respect for the holiday. There are so many stories and so many examples and legislation and like rules that people abide by, and I really never know the history behind that. So we're going to explore some of the spine-tingling stories I've discovered, um, unravel the mysteries that'll definitely send shivers down your spine, and you'll walk away with some knowledge on how to keep you and your family safe. In today's episode, we're going to talk about why you should never let your children trick-or-treat alone. This is the story of Lisa Ann French and the Halloween Killer, also known as Gerald Turner. So a little background on Lisa Ann French. She was born in June 2nd, 1964. She lived in Wisconsin with her mother, a stepfather, and newborn half-brother. She was in fourth grade and a member of Girl Scouts. In 1973, on Halloween night, nine-year-old Lisa Ann French was out trick-or-treating alone near her home on her way to a neighborhood Halloween party when she knocked on Gerald Turner's door. Now, Lisa knew Gerald Turner. Lisa often spent time with him and his girlfriend, Arlene Penn, and their infant child and had regular conversations with him. Uh, Gerald Turner had also previously shared a rented duplex with French's family, so he was no stranger to her. However, Lisa had no idea how dangerous Gerald Turner was and how much danger she was in. He had previously sexually molested a 15-year-old babysitter, uh, but he was never accused, so there was really no way for her to know. Lisa Ann French left her home around 5.45 p.m. dressed as a hobo. She wore a black felt hat, a green parka, and dotted freckles on her cheeks. Lisa originally was supposed to be accompanied by a friend, uh, but her friend got grounded and she had to go by herself. According to Gerald Turner's confession, Lisa Ann French said trick or treat and walked through his open doorway with her candy bag open and Gerald Turner let her in. Gerald Turner and Lisa Ann French began to talk about candy, and at some point, Gerald Turner lured Lisa into his bedroom where he sexually assaulted her and brutally murdered her. Gerald Turner said that after the sexual assault, Lisa wasn't breathing. He attempted to revive her, but was interrupted when his girlfriend, Arlene Penn, returned home from the same party that Lisa was supposed to be at. Now, his girlfriend, Arlene Penn, said that Gerald Turner made several trips to the bedroom to lay down, saying that he was sick. Um, He was in a bathrobe, and Gerald Turner said that at the time, Lisa's body was in the bathroom. And he was trying to tend to it and make sure that his girlfriend didn't catch her, basically. Arlene Penn left around 8 p.m. to go visit her mother. At that time, Gerald Turner stuffed Lisa Ann French's body and drove her body to a farm field and discarded her corpse. 
and in an effort to avoid leaving evidence of fingerprints on French's body or on the crime scene, Turner wore socks on his hands when moving the body. Lisa's mother, Marianne Gerwig, started to grow worried about French's whereabouts when she didn't return home by her 7 p.m. curfew. And by 10 p.m., a search party had formed and begun searching for the young girl. On November 3rd, 1973, at 11.30 a.m., the four-day search for Lisa and French, which included over 5,000 volunteers, came to an end. When two brown plastic bags were discovered, near a barbed wire fence, near a forest. One bag contained French's naked corpse, and the other bag contained the clothing from her Halloween costume. An autopsy performed on Lisa's body revealed that she had died from asphyxiation, though a pathologist had also stated that she had died from circulatory shock from the sexual trauma that endured. Lisa Ann French's funeral was held on November 6, 1973. Two days later, on November 8th, the Chamber of Commerce had posted a $10,000 reward for the capture of Lisa Ann French's killer. Gerald Turner was made a suspect of the murder early in the investigation by Wisconsin law enforcement, but it took nine months of questioning and testing until he confessed in August 8th, 1974, to the rape and murder of Lisa Ann French. During those nine months of scrutiny, he was brought in by law enforcement to perform a polygraph test, uh, but they came back inconclusive and he refused to perform a second exam. Police had also collected body hair and bedspread fiber samples from Gerald Turner, and his hair samples were positively matched on Lisa Ann French's body and her clothing upon her death. Gerald Turner, in his 1974 confession, had stated that when he saw Lisa Ann French in his doorway, he was highly sexually motivated, to which he said he then proceeded to lead her into his bedroom where he undressed Lisa and then performed anal intercourse on her. Turner then said he noticed that Lisa had stopped breathing after the sexual assault. He put his head over her chest and noticed that her heart was still beating and attempted to revive her by placing his hands over her chest. But then his girlfriend got home, so he couldn't do anything. Gerald Turner was convicted in February 4th, 1975, on the charges of second-degree murder and enticing a child for immoral purposes and acts of sexual perversion. He was sentenced to 38 years and six months in prison. The story doesn't end there, unfortunately. Gerald Turner is currently in prison, but he has actually been released from prison twice and is seeking to be released again. The first time he was released was in 1992, when he got out on parole for good behavior. However, his release sparked public outrage and multiple protests in the community because of the brutal nature of his crime. This actually sparked a legislation called Turner's Law, which allows criminals who have been released from their prison sentences to be detained in mental health facilities if they're deemed sexually violent persons or dangerous to the public, which Gerald Turner absolutely is. So Gerald Turner was sent back to prison on November 23rd, 1993, after Department of Corrections appeal ruled that they had miscalculated his mandatory parole release for his good behavior. The second time was in 1998, after a four-day trial. An expert had deemed Gerald Turner a quote-unquote non-violent sexual predator, meaning he was still a sexual predator, just non-violent and not dangerous to the public. And that meant he did not have to be held at a treatment center under Turner's Law, named after him, and that he could begin his mandatory second parole that year. However, he was sent back to prison in 2003 after being released for more than 15 years. There were hundreds of pornographic images found on his computer in the bedroom of his halfway house in Wisconsin, which was a violation of his parole, meaning he's always the garbage person, sexual predator, and probably should have never been released. So Gerald Turner's prison term was technically complete in 2018, 
and he is seeking another psychiatric review to deem him as a quote-unquote non-violent offender again, so that the state cannot keep the notorious Halloween killer at a mental health facility. But Gerald Turner, the Halloween killer, has been shown way more mercy than he ever deserved. He certainly didn't show Lisa Ann French any mercy when he sexually assaulted her and took her life. Let's hope there is a competent enough provider who sees through this feeble attempt at getting the freedom he should never be entitled to ever again. The actions of the Halloween killer sent shockwaves through the local community of Wisconsin and changed Halloween forever, causing more stringent daylight trick-or-treating hours and inspiring the creation of the Law Turner's Law. That story is an example of why you should never let your children trick or treat alone and to always keep yourself safe. And that was the story of the Halloween killer. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of the Ray Review podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please don't be a stranger. Hit the subscribe button. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave a review. It's like my own version of a true crime confession, which I just love. And if you have any cases you'd like me to cover, I'm always looking for recommendations or new stories. So you can slide into my DMs or email me at rayreview2. Uh, again, that's rayreview2 at gmail.com. And please follow me on Instagram and TikTok. So until our next episode in the world of true crime, please stay curious and stay safe. Keep your doors locked, keep your headphones on, and be good. And goodbye for now.